Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do price action analysis. Unbiasedly, y'all thought I was going to forget to say unbiasedly, no, unbiased price action analysis. I'm looking at this uh, YouTube song, uh, we're not going to take it. Such a great song, you know, I want to give a big shout out to Auntie Chartist, I do this thing in my Discord where I ask members, hey, y'all want to help me out with a good song to listen to? They get pumped for the video. So shout out to Auntie Chartist. Yes, guys, there is an Auntie Chartist out there, and she's in my Discord. Now, on to business, guys. Got a big red day. Big red day. We got a nice breakdown. Let me zoom in here. Remember the uh, bull flag? The infamous bull flag. The infamous bull flag that I'm sure many... YouTubers, including Uncle, has been talking about. You see the support of the bull flag. Okay, we got a touch here. February 6th low, February 7th, February 9th, and February 10th low. That's four touches as, you know, as a support. And we broke it down. That is a bearish breakdown, guys. But of course, if we zoom out, it, we almost test, tested the 38.2 Fib level from all-time high down to October low, okay? Almost tested it today. So that's gonna be a very, very big critical support level for tomorrow. So guys, what do I do on Uncle's channel? I identify the levels, identify the setups, and let you guys know what my plan is on how I'm going to trade this, all right? And I also share with you guys how I trade for educational purposes. So let's prepare. We had a very uh, one direct, pretty one directional day today, intraday. Okay, I, I wrote here in my Discord the spy updates channel. This was the first, well, the second post of the day. Wrote, wrote at 9:27 a.m. right before the market opened. 404 was a strong support for spy last Friday. To see it receive some selling pressure in the pre-market isn't bullish. However, real volume is in during the trading hours. 404 is first resistant. If cleared, 405.547 back in play, okay? So when resistant clear, that's when we look to long or get calls. As long as below 404, bearish with 41.7 to 42 zone as next support, then 400 below, okay? 41.7 to 4.2 zone was a Fibonacci level. You go to the daily chart, I got FIB level from October low to that February high. 23.6 retracement levels at 41.74. We broke that down as well as well with the, the bull flag support. Okay, so I was bearish as long as below 404. So if I'm bearish, I'm looking for shorting opportunities. Okay, now I mentioned, I also mentioned in the last video I made, the annoying, I said it, the annoying 404 level. Today, it was not annoying to uncle. Today, it served as a great pivot level, okay? So we saw how well it, 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 it tested and defended as support. So to see the role change, to see a support change and act and behave as a resistant level, that is a bearish sign, okay? Price action traders, it's not just about resistant levels and support levels. To be a really good price action trader, you got to learn how to watch the, the, the behavior of the price and how it reacts, okay? That's why concepts like the backtest and goal strategy, which is pretty much the role change concept that I always talk to you guys about, concepts like that is very important, all right? So to see it act like a support, a strong support by the, at that on Friday and to see it role change to resist it is very bearish. And that's where I entered puts okay and you can see it just continued to break down support had a support around 402 played it level to level and once it hit my level i just leave a runner okay until the runner gets stopped out so yeah you see on this can i had a 402 to 401.7 level i was watching a 402 level it broke down 402 this was alerted in the group as well and you can see here we got some washes above it went as high as 42.5 but it never closed on the 15 minute chart it never closed above 402 on the 15-minute chart. When do I say set your stop loss? 
if you entered on a breakdown of 402, you should cut your loss when uh, the candle closes above 402 on the 15 minute chart, or I usually set it a dollar from entry. So if you enter for 402, you should cut loss if it hits 403. As you can see, if your entry was here, it did not hit 403 or the stop loss, and it just continued downwards for the rest of the day. The trend is your friend. Uncle is your family. Remember that, okay? So I'm telling you the concepts of price action trading sheep style. Because if it goes, it went down to the downside today, we trade it unbiasedly sheep style. If it went up, it would be the same concept. All right? So hope you guys got something out of that and learned some trading tactics from Uncle Chuck. Because that's the point of me sharing this part of the video. Now, let's go to the part of it that most of you guys came for. My price action analysis on the bigger time frame and the levels and setups I'll be watching. So, yes, we got the breakdown of the bull flag support. Okay. However, RSI is pretty oversold already. So, we could get some basing. I don't know. But the price action will show us. And that is the point of my videos. I'm not here to make predictions. And I don't encourage y'all to make predictions. It's no problem if you do, and there's nothing wrong with having a bias. But when it's time to trade, the most important thing is, can we react in real time? Okay? It's like it, trading for boxing. Someone is teaching you how to defend against the, jo the jab. Yeah, you can do some drills on how you can defend against the jab. But when it comes down to the real fighting, you're gonna, you know, it's all about reacting as best as you can. Okay? And try to predict, get into a fight. Try to, I'm not telling you guys to be violent. Maybe go to a boxing gym and spar with somebody in a controlled setting. But try to do that. And tr when you spar, try to predict what they're going to do. Oh, they're going to punch with this and then they're going to do this and that. See how well that worked for you. It, it most likely will not. But when you become a good reactor, you can notice the signs. Something like, okay, he's telegraphing his jabs. So when you, when you notice signs like that, oh, he's telegraphing his jab, you know how to react better. You'll see the jab coming. It's the same concept that I try to put into price action analysis. Okay? So, basically, when resistance clears, that's when we want to look for longs. Uh, false breakdown setup, when it breaks down a support and then recaptures that level and turns it back into a support. You know, false breakdown setups, that's when we look for longs. So, with that being said, I hope that helped you guys understand how Uncle does his analysis and, you know, and understand my price action, the bull case and the bear case a little bit better, okay? So with that being said, the bull, uh, the bull flag support is now around 399.5-ish. So we'll, we'll give that a zone 399.5 to 400. Tomorrow, if SPY wants to be bullish, it needs to recapture 400 to cancel today's breakdown, all right? We also broke down the 23.6 FIB level from October low to February high. That's at 41.74. We need to recapture that level as well. If SPY can recapture those two levels, we will have a false breakdown setup on our hand. And that would be a good trigger to look for calls or look to long. That's the bull case scenario. Okay? And then maybe we go back and test 404 to 405 zone. 404 was February 17th pivot low. And, February, and 405 was February 10th pivot low. We got to clear those levels. The big level I'm looking for. Remember, I mentioned to you guys, below 408, Uncle is bearish. Okay? So if it can recapture 408, maybe we can go to a higher high. And this trend from October can continue. Okay? I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying we need to let the price action decide for us, show us. Using these levels I gave you and the setups I give you, and based on the setups, that's your indicator. If we recapture those levels, that is your indicator to get calls. Does that make sense? All right. Now, as far as the bear case scenario goes, this breakdown can hold as long as SPY is below 399.5 to 400 level. As long as below 400, the highest, okay, or even 41.74, I would stay bearish. Okay, there's always the chance SPY can backtest 41.74. But what I'm saying is, as long as below 41.7 and 400, the breakdown of today holds into tomorrow. Okay, the next critical support is 398.48.
That is the 38.2 Fibonacci level from all-time high down to October low. If that level fails, I would be targeting the trend line uh, from October, the, mul uh, the yearly trend line from January high, okay? The infamous yearly trend line that everyone knows about, okay? I have it personally around 397.3-ish, okay? Um, and also, we have this trend line from October low. And we had a lot of tests of that support as support back in uh, mid January, uh, excuse me, mid December to early January. All right, we might be going for another test. This trend line has kept SPY in a bull trend since October. Okay, so if we break down that trend line, which is around 396 for tomorrow, that would be extremely, extremely, extremely bearish. Okay. So you guys got my bull case, you guys got my bear case scenario. My job is to simplify this for you. I'm not trying to make it sound like rocket science. I want to explain it so simple that even a fifth grader would understand. And I hope that I was able to do my job. Okay, moving on to triple Q. We broke down a Fibonacci channel line, which I mentioned was at 296. And we got the close. We got a close at 294. Okay. The 50% Fib level from August high down to October low was at 294.3-ish. And we got the close below that, okay? So for tomorrow, the highest that bears want to see is 296 for Triple Q. Because if it recaptures 296, that would be bullish. That would be a false breakdown setup. If Triple Q recaptures 296, that would be bullish. That's when you want to look for calls, Okay? As long as below 296, I would stay bearish on the triple Q. All right. 294.3 is the first resistance. But as long as below, I got 290 as the next support. 287.5 is gap fill. And there's another fib level uh, around here, around 284.5 ish. Okay. 284.88, actually. Okay. We'll round it to 285. Okay. Very simple. Stay bearish on triple Q as long as it's below 296. Flip to a uh, bullish if it can recapture 296. Okay, put it 298.5 ish, 300, uh, 302.3 ish to uh, 303.8 ish is a zone, and maybe we can test 307.3 ish again. Okay, that's triple Q. And IWM, that yellow line right there, is an important line. That's the 38.2 Fibonacci level from March 2020 to all-time high. Okay, we got a little weak breakdown of that level today. It's a lot of lines. Let me zoom in. Okay, so yeah, if, if it can stay below 187.6, this breakdown continues. I got the next support at around... 183.7 is to 184, round to 184. If that breaks down, 181.7, 180, and I got a support around 179.5 is yeah, 179.5 to 180. Okay, it can be bullish if it can get back above 187.6. Got resistant around 188.5, needs to clear that, go test 190 and recapture 191.7 to trigger more upside. Okay, guys, so that's the levels for IWM. Uh, Tesla, it broke back below that 199 level, guys. We got a false breakout setup here. That's very bearish. Okay, so we got we cleared 199 back on Valentine's Day. Friday, we back tested as a, a support. It was successful, but it didn't show follow through today. As a matter of fact, it closed back below 199. So I'm telling you guys... Stay bearish as long as below 199. Flip back to bullish if 199 can recapture, okay? If 199 recapture, I'll favor more upside 203, 206, 210, 211.5, and 214. But as long as below 199, stay bearish, man. Stay bearish, nieces and nephew. 193, 187.5 are targets I will be watching for, okay? Apple finally broke down that 150.6 level. As long as below 150.6, stay bearish on Apple. 
But if it recaptures that tomorrow, look for long. That would be a hell of a false breakdown setup, okay? But right now, we got the first breakdown of this level in a couple of weeks. In a while, actually. Alright? Stay bearish below 150.6. Next target is at 146.5. There's a gap around 145.4-ish. And then the 143.5. Let's see if those can test, okay? But if we recapture 156, uh, 150.6... Watch that 153.5 and 155 levels. They could get tested again. And we'll be very bullish if they clear, okay? Now look at the VIX. Holy moly. VIX finally got above that 21.2 level, okay? VIX giving us some bullish action. Although the RSI is overbought, uh, it can continue to be overbought, okay? So we'll see what the price action for VIX wants to do. However, as long as above 21.2... The VIX is bullish, in my opinion. 23.8 and 25.97 are the next Fibonacci levels I would be watching for. DXY, look at this. DXY got a couple of hours left before it closes, but it's trying to break above that 104.1 level again. If it can do it. We've had plenty of basing now, DXY. If it could do it, that would be very bullish. Targeting 104.9 Fibonacci channel line and above that was 106, okay? Now support based on the Fib channel is at 103.7 and previous pivot low at 103.4. If those fail, could be bearish on the DXY again. I'll be targeting 102.5 and 102. Okay, guys? So watch if it can break out or not. A bullish DXY is a bearish spy. All right, now let's end this with the option flow filter for 500k premiums or above. Bearish, bearish, bearish. Okay, one that sticks out is this one though. Sweep orders over 5,000 in size fits my criteria. Out the money, 385 strike price for March 10th. Okay, so you guys see it. Don't. Big money, big money is still bearish. Triple Q. Wow, 98% in the puts. Okay, very bearish. IWM, 55% in the calls. Nothing that really sticks out though. But this is interesting though. It's not a big size, but it's a 196 strike April 21st. Okay, they entered around 187.5. Interesting. Okay, so let's look at Tesla. 61% in calls for. Tesla, interesting, okay? So we got this. Well, we got some in the money calls here. None that, you know, it doesn't fit my criteria because the size is small. Size is small. But yeah, overall bear, bullish. Bullish on Tesla, okay. And Apple, 70%. 70% for puts on Apple, okay? And VIX, 100% into calls. Wow, okay? So, I hope you guys found value in that. If you guys want more content from Uncle Charters, please consider joining my Discord. Would love to serve you guys at a higher level. Other than that, have a great night. Peace.